So it's interesting that uh, DJ Academics reposted that clip. Um, Eric actually hit me up today. He hit me on the phone and, and told me that the clip was going viral. Um, and as far as what I can see on X, it's, it's getting a lot of views. The clip that I showed you guys at the beginning with me basically going in on Kendrick and you know all, all of that good stuff, right? It's funny because last night, when my show was over, I noticed that DJ Academics was live, right? So I went over to uh, his show, and he had he had people on the show, but I couldn't really tell if he had them on the show through Streamyard the way I do it. I'm I'm guessing he probably had them on the show through Discord, right? And they were talking about the K Dot situation, um, you know, th that him put him putting out this new song. And I was I was looking everywhere. I should have just hit up How To Man because I think he's a moderator on um Academics um uh Discord server. But I was looking for his Discord server because I was gonna bruh, I was gonna join that. I was gonna join and and go in on on some of them dudes because I'm I'm sitting there listening to academics trying to explain to these dudes that the worst thing Drake could do is stop putting out music, to stop putting out content, right? Because that's what their strategy is. And and this is how the Drake haters hide their their real intentions about Drake is they get up there and they say but you know, I'm a K Dot and a Drake fan. I'm I'm fans of both, you know, which is horseshit. Let's just be real about it, right? So the dudes are sitting up there, and this is what I heard them say, right? They were like, the problem with Drake is he just keep putting out music. He just keep putting out music. Come on, bro. You 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 caught your L. Go away for a while and give us an opportunity to miss you. Like take your ball and go home. And I'm sitting there listening. And I'm like, that was your strategy the whole time. Remember when 50 said on Wankster? They know they can't shine if I'm around the rhyme. That's what they want. These niggas, I finally figured out what the strategy is. I finally understand it. These niggas are trying to shame Drake into quietly walking away so that they could get their shine on in his damn absence. That's really what these niggas want. This is what these K Dot fans want. Yo, I, I got up today and look, I'm gonna tell you something right now. The K bots are at work, bruh. You feel me? You know how when you go on TikTok and you can train the algorithm to show you the type of content you wanna see, right? So anytime there's some content I don't wanna see, I click the little you know little thing at the bottom and i click not interested that's me training the algorithm right so if you're on tiktok if it's something you like watching you make sure you watch the whole clip you like it i even favored it right and then it'll start showing me more clips that pertain to that type of subject something that i don't like i'll click not interested right so keep this in mind when not like us first came out right I kept getting bombarded with nothing but videos of people kissing K Dot's ass. So I just kept hitting not interested, not interested, not interested, not interested, right? After about a week, I stopped getting videos from people defending K Dot and, and, and trying to say that K Dot is, is the best thing since sliced bread and, and all that old bullshit, right? So. He dropped this song yesterday. Now, yesterday it wasn't a problem when I went through, you know, TikTok, right? I get up today and start scrolling through, through TikTok 
And all I'm coming across is people don't understand this song that Kendrick put out and the depth of it and the meaning of it and the uh, 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 uh. I like here we go with this bullshit. Here we go with this bullshit. Every other video is some nigga defending K Dot. I said, this is some bullshit. This is some bot shit. Okay? Because that ain't organic. I don't care what nobody say. That's not organic. Now, some people might be sitting back like, okay, well, why do you say that, angry man? I'm, I'm going to tell you why, right? Because this is how I know it's artificial. This is how I know it's artificial. So... The moment that they announced that K Dot was going to be doing the the halftime show next year, right? There was a flood of backlash on the internet that started getting directed towards Jay Z. So mad people on the internet was like, "Yo, this is foul. Why y'all not? Why y'all not having Wayne?" What's going on? What's really good? Y'all tripping. This is messed up. Because as much as y'all like to have that Drake hate, you know, Wayne got mad love, right? So all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, Kendrick decides to pop out and put this bullshit ass song out. The reason why he did this, how many of y'all want to know the reason why K-Dot did this? And this is what I meant when I said, this nigga is the real industry nigga. This nigga is the real industry nigga, not Drake. Shout out to Jacoby. Pre press one if y'all want to know. Press one if y'all want to know why K-Dot put out this song. Shout out to Yvette. Said love and support. Appreciate you. He put out this song to distract everybody. He put out this song to be the lightning rod for the attention so that everybody will start talking about the song and the subliminals he's throwing at Drake to deflect the attention away from why did y'all not pick Wayne to be in the Super Bowl? That's the only reason he did this shit. Because now, today, what, what, what is everybody talking about? Most of the people ain't even talking about Wayne not being in the Super Bowl next year. Now they're talking about K-Dot's song. Right? Now they're talking about K-Dot's song. So that was the entire purpose for him putting out that track was to distract and, and deflect the attention away from what everybody should have been talking about, right? And, and you know, some of the explanations, I saw a guy, there's a guy that's from the West Coast. He be on TikTok and all this nigga do is... You know, he, this dude could be K-Dot's lawyer. You know, typical West Coast dude, you know, up there with, you know, you know, over, over expressing his R's when he talks, you know. Like, you know, it's, it's really hard to understand. Like, you know, that typical West Coast dude, he's sitting up there going in on Drake, right? So he, he puts out a video and in the video he's like, so, you know that OVO done sent out letters, cease and desist letters, telling the NFL and all of them that they can't perform not like us at the Super Bowl because in the song he's calling him a PDF file. And the funniest thing about it is dude was like, and I knew he was going to do this. And you know what's so hilarious to me about niggas, especially ass ignorant niggas? 
Why wouldn't he send a cease and desist letter telling the NFL to not allow an artist to stand up on a stage and accuse him of some shit he ain't been convicted of? Why wouldn't he do that? That man ain't been convicted of nothing. And these niggas is mad at the possibility not even the reality. They're mad at the possibility that he could possibly stop him from saying that at the Super Bowl. And I'm going to tell you something right now. <laughs> you niggas, y'all are some real fuck niggas. Y'all some real clowns, bro. Y'all are some clowns. You, you, you K-Dot fans, you niggas, you, you have exposed yourselves in this beef. Like, y'all are on another level of clownery, bruh. Like, real talk. So I'm sitting back, and, and now they trying to hit us with the, oh, the reason why y'all Drake fans don't like this song is because... You want some simple music. You 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 want some simplistic music. You don't want nothing this deep. You don't want nothing this man. Shut your ass up. Like you you niggas is you, you niggas are fucking hilarious, bro. Hold on, let me let me see if I can find one. I think I might have saved one of the videos, right? I think I might have saved one of the videos. Did I save one? Oh oh, here's one right here. Now this is one of a white boy, right? Cause he think he think this is what the he he doing this cause he think this is what black folks want him to do, right? Why watch this? For the women that deal with the clown and nerve shit. Look 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 what the shit say. It say every rapper reconsidering their entire life when Kendrick drops. Man, shut your lame ass up, my guy. If Kendrick is telling Drake he not part of the culture, your ass definitely ain't part of the culture. That's the funniest thing about it. The funniest thing about this whole Kendrick and Drake beef is you got white folk chiming in on it on Kendrick's side. And it's like, bruh, why are you chiming in? If he's coming out with a song not like us and he's giving all of these speeches about colonizers and all of this crap, why are you chiming in on black folk business? Better yet, let's ask this question. Why haven't you niggas said to all the white people dancing to not like us and chiming in on this topic, why haven't you told them to stop Putting a nose in black folk business like you did when Vlad spoke on it and that college professor black lady told him to mind his business and, and then y'all had a hissy fit about it. When she told that, when she told Vlad to mind his business, right? And stay out of black folk business. Y'all was behind that. But whenever these white folk get up here on Kendrick's side to talk bad about Drake, y'all quiet. Y'all quiet as church mouses. Excuse me, church mice. Explain that to me. How does that work? How does that work, fam? In fact, let me find this video of, of the guy. Talking about how us, us, you know, us, us Drake fans, you Drake fans, you just want simple music. You, you don't want music that has deep meaning, right? So that, that's the problem with you, with, with, with you Drake fans. You, you want, you want some simple music. You don't want music that's deep. You don't want music that has meaning to it, right? So. I don't even, I don't even need the video. I don't even need the damn video. I don't even need the video because you niggas see here's the thing about the K dot fans. Y'all y'all are hypocrites. Y'all niggas are entire hypocrites. You feel what I'm saying? 
Y'all niggas are entire fucking hypocrites. Now, why, why am I saying this? Because here's the interesting thing. Kendrick said, I'm what the culture's feeling, right? He said, I'm what the culture's feeling. Ain't that what he said? He said he's what the culture's feeling. And he pretends that he is the ambassador for black culture, right? And so when you niggas sit back and you say stuff like, oh, y'all just want simple music. Y'all don't want music that has a social commentary. Y'all don't want music that's going to be good for your soul. Y'all don't want music that's going to educate you and teach you. Y'all don't want music that does this and does that. Let me tell you something. Coming from our culture. And the moment I say this shit, every last one of you in here that's black, you gonna know I'm telling the truth. Kendrick is Sharif off of Menace to Society. And every hood, there's always a Sharif. In every neighborhood, there's always that one nigga that's done got knowledge of self, that's done learned some shit, and he can't wait to tell it to everybody, but he picks the most inopportune times to say the shit. This nigga is Sharif leaning on the damn cooler, leaning on the damn uh, uh, cooler with the beer in it. Hey, man, what you doing? Trying to stop y'all from drinking this poison. Bruh. Why you leaning on, man, move out the way. And why you got that hoodie on? Got this hoodie on because we tropical people. Let them Europeans deal with this madness. Nigga can't wait to preach to you. That's Kendrick. And in our culture, we get sick of niggas like that. Because there's a time and a place for everything. We don't want to hear that shit all the time, bruh. What, what did Stacy say to that nigga when they sitting in the car and he's like, hey, man, put this tape in. He's like, man, get out of here. That black power shit ain't getting no play in this ride. Like, nigga, when Kane got in the car, yo, we supposed to be brothers. Oh, you trying to kick knowledge? Like, nigga, go somewhere and sit your goofy ass down, bro. I don't know why they let y'all niggas, they let him get away. They didn't let nobody get away with that shit. They didn't let nobody get away with that shit, but they let him get away with it. They let him get away with it. Every time he go in the booth, this nigga got to preach to us. Man, we don't got time for that woke ass shit, bruh. We don't got time for that. He just as bad as these feminists that got to put political agendas in every single movie that we watch. Every movie we watch, we can't be, we can't just be entertained. The movie got to have some sort of message in it about feminism or female empowerment or, or, or racism or, or something. Nigga, we don't want to see that shit all the time. It is depressing. It's depressing. But that's who that nigga is. That nigga is Sharif from Minister Society. And guess what? And I'm not wishing nothing on nobody. Don't get it twisted. But what Sharif's downfall was in Menace was even though he had knowledge himself, he was still hanging out with niggas that was doing shit they ain't got no business. Sound familiar? Sound familiar? Even though he had knowledge himself, and was getting away from the foolishness, he was still hanging around niggas that was doing shit they ain't got no business. You know, I don't know, like having a concert where you bring out a bunch of Bloods and Crips on the stage with you. And so now you got all of these niggas, because you know they got to come out in full force 
and try to do damage control for, for Kendrick putting out that trash song. You know they got to come out here. You, you know they got to come out here and, and do damage control. Like, all oh, snap. He, he done put out a dud. We got to jump out here and defend it. So now you got all these Negroes jumping out here trying to break down the, the deeper meaning of it. Like, man, I don't want to hear that shit. Get out of here, bruh. Shout out to Bishop J. Jermaine. He said praying to that porcelain god. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why ain't nobody trying to hear that shit, bro? Like, real talk, like, let's let's be real, culturally, to everybody that's watching, am I lying? Am I lying? Culturally, we could all be somewhere having a good time. You, you might be smoking some trees, or, or you might be drinking some liquor. You might just be, you just dare to have a good time. You not dare to think about nothing serious. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you still in the struggle. When you still in the struggle, you got enough shit on your mind. You got bills on your mind. You got work on your mind. You you got you got uh baby mama drama. You got the the bullshit you got to deal with in the hood. So when you go to a party, all you want to do is have a good time. It's an escape. A brief escape. That's what movies are. That's what music is. It is a brief escape, right? Now, true enough, there are movies that are meant to be inspirational on some serious shit. And those movies have their place, right? But I don't want to see Fruitvale Station every time I go to the movie theater. I don't want to see Malcolm X every time I go to the movie theater. I don't want to see Mississippi burning every time I go to the movie theater. I don't want to see uh, Rosewood every time I go to the movie theater. I don't want to see that every time. Sometimes I want to see How High. Sometimes I want to see Old School. Sometimes I want to see Animal House. Sometimes I want to see... Uh, 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 Ferris Bueller's day off. Sometimes I want to see something that's just fun. That's just fun. But this nigga, every time this nigga gets on the track, we, we gotta, we gotta listen to Rosewood on a fucking album. We gotta listen to the, the, we gotta listen to Roots on a damn album. And, and, and look, <laughs> nobody's trying to hear that shit. Nobody. That's the reason why Drake running circles around that nigga, because Drake is going to put out some music that people can vibe to. He's going to put out some music that people can dance to. He's going to put out some music that's going to make people feel good, not make people feel depressed. Like, let's be real. That song he put out yesterday was depressing as hell. Jasmine said, like DJ Axe said, it's like K-Dot is mentally obsessed with Drake. If the consensus is that you won, why keep dropping like it, like he's he is threatened by Drake? Because he know he didn't win. Like, yo, check this out. Check this out. That's just like if you get into a scuffle in school, right? Let's say you get into a scuffle in school with a kid that's less popular than you. We're talking about high school, right? Let's say, because the way niggas is acting right now is some real high school shit. Let's be real. So let's say you in high school, you kind of popular. You get into a scuffle with a kid that ain't that popular, right? That you thought was a lame clown, whatever, but that nigga had hands with him, right? So y'all get into a scuffle, boom, 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 boom. You didn't definitively beat his ass. Y'all just was in a fight, right? But because you're popular, everybody, all of the people that's in your little crew start saying, yo, yeah, my man won. Yeah, he won. He won, right? And so because of social pressure, because of peer pressure, 
Everybody goes along with the fact that you won because you're more popular. But here's the thing. Do you think you won? Do you think you won? I don't care how many of you niggas out here kiss K-Dot's ass. I don't care how many of you niggas jump on these shows, these panels, these YouTube streets, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, and say he won. The question is, do he think he won? And I'm telling you right now, he don't. I'm telling you right now, he doesn't. He does not think he won. And that's the only reason why y'all confused at him putting out this shit is because y'all think that he thinks he won. That nigga don't think he won. Because if he thought he won, he wouldn't be acting the way he's acting. If he thought he won, he wouldn't have felt like, like right now, Double XL just came out with an article saying that Kendrick is set to perform not like us at the Super Bowl. The only problem with it is people are tired of the song and they're starting to complain. But get, but why are they tired of the song? Because once he saw the song was popular, he drove it into the ground. We talking overkill. That nigga at that pop-out concert performed that song at least 10 damn times. You feel me? So you got to sit back and ask yourself, like, do you really think that he won? If, if he has to go in the overkill like that? Like, are, are you, if you swat a fly after the fly is down on the ground, are you going to keep hitting it with the fly swatter? No. No. The only, the only insect that you would keep hitting like that is a spider or a cockroach for one of two reasons. The spider, you're afraid to leave it alive, and the cockroach, you know how good they are at surviving shit. So it ain't no mystery that this man knows that Drake is a threat. It ain't no mystery. Like right now, if we being totally honest, right now, Drake is putting out he put out the 100 gigs of, of content. Why? Because the niggas hurt that y'all have turned on him like this. I bet you any amount of money. This nigga thought that the whole industry, this nigga thought that the, the whole culture loved him. And now, keep it in mind, he knew that the niggas in the industry didn't like him, but he thought the fans loved him. He thought, he thought you fans loved him. Now he has to come to the realization that the fans don't love him the way he thought. So what he's doing, he putting out that, that content for nostalgia. Look, man, remember who I am. You can hear it in that song. You can hear it in that song on the 100 gigs, right? On, on SOD. Watch this right here. You can hear it in his voice. See, it ain't about K Dot. When I said that nigga don't give a fuck about K-Dot, he don't care about K-Dot. He don't even take K-Dot seriously because K-Dot is not in his stratosphere. He's not up there. What hurt that nigga is the fans. That's what hurt him. You niggas hurt him. You niggas hurt him. And, 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 and I know it because of his moves, the way he's putting out all of this content, this nostalgia, he's trying to remind you of why you liked him. He's trying to remind you of why you fell in love with his music. Right? So, so you niggas have, have, have fucking hurt his ass. And so right now, he's in his light-skinned feelings. Drake is in his light-skinned feelings. But I'm going to tell you what's going to fucking happen if K-Dot don't chill out. Because at this point, he's a bully. 
If we being totally fucking honest, at this point, he's the bully. At this point, Drake ain't the bully no more. At this point, K-Dot is the bully. And I'm telling you right now, he gonna keep pushing, he gonna keep pushing, and Drake gonna put some shit out, and it's gonna be undeniable. It's gonna be unfucking deniable and I've seen it happen so many times. You don't know how many times I've seen a nigga just keep pushing some shit to the limit. Just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And then the backlash, because you can't put out that energy and not expect it to come back. You can't put out that kind of energy and think it's never gonna come back to you. He gonna fuck around and, and, and sooner or later, when that light-skinned nigga get out of his feelings, <laughs> when he finally get out of his feelings and decide, you know what, I'm tired of this nigga. When he really start to take that nigga seriously, it's going to be a problem, bro. I'm telling you right now. That nigga ain't tired yet. That nigga's not tired yet, bruh. He's not tired yet. When he finally get tired. <laughs> when he finally get tired, he gonna be like, you know what, man? I'm sick of this motherfucker. <laughs> that nigga gonna leak up with 40. <laughs> he gonna fuck around and wake up that you going to fuck around and wake up that damn uh, 5 a.m. in Toronto, Drake, and it's going to be a problem. That nigga going to fuck around. You going to fuck around and force that nigga into his final form, nigga, because he didn't had these cornrows for a while. <laughs> if that nigga come out with his hair just out... <laughs> That nigga gonna have the eye of the tiger, nigga. It's gonna be a wrap, bruh. It's gonna be a wrap. Bishop J. Jermaine said, Drake is not you. Bruh, let me explain something to you, uh, J. Jermaine, that you don't understand about light-skinned niggas. Every light-skinned nigga has his breaking point. Every light-skinned nigga has his breaking point. Especially when it comes to dark-skinned niggas fucking with us. You, you ever see, you ever be in school and you see that one light-skinned kid that everybody think is soft? And so the dark-skinned kids be picking on him. You know, they be throwing shit at him and all of that shit. And one day that motherfucker just do this. <laughs> I'm sick of this shit! Would a nigga do that shit? <laughs> you ever see a nigga do that shit? I'm tired of this shit, nigga! When, when a nigga do that shit, bro. <laughs> it's gonna be over, bro. <laughs> At that point, you can't tell a nigga nothing. You just gotta fight him. <laughs> I'm sick of this shit, nigga! <laughs> oh my god. But no, but in, in all seriousness, right? Yo, shout out to, to Vic Vega. He said, support for the cause. Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's the real beige rage. That's the real beige rage. When that nigga finally snapped the fuck out, like, especially if that nigga start crying. Oh my God. That nigga start crying and you start seeing them tears streaming. I'm sick of this shit, nigga. Oh, that's when the nigga come with the fist in slow motion. You better not get hit by that fist. That fist contains years of pent up rage and anger and, and all of that shit, bruh. You better not let him hit you with that fist. You better dodge that shit, bruh. You better dodge that shit. Cause when you get when you get hit with that fist, you gonna think that was a dark skinned nigga that hit you. 
you going to think that was a, a, a 50 cent type nigga that hit you. Bong, like, that's going to be. Because <laughs> every, look, let me tell you something. Every light-skinned nigga is Gohan before he turns Super Saiyan 2. He got a breaking point. You got to think, Gohan, everybody thought Gohan was soft. Everybody thought he was weak. No, nah, nigga. Mm-mm. Don't piss that nigga off. <laughs> Don't piss that nigga off. <laughs> Do not piss that nigga off. Shout out to Zero. He said, just heard the new K-Dot song. It's a right. Nothing spectacular like these Glazers think it is. That song is trash, bro. That song is trash. Shout out to MJB said, remember what happened when Joyner Lucas came at Tory Lanez on that Kodak Black diss track? Yeah, it's funny until it ain't funny no more. It's facts. Facts. Or better yet, you remember when Zoe Williams jumped on Ari Spears? Ari Spears ain't see that shit coming. That nigga said, say that shit again. When that nigga took, that nigga take his glasses off and shit. Nigga do that shit right there. <laughs> when a nigga tuck his chin and start looking at you, say that shit again. You know what I'm saying? When a nigga, that's when a nigga talk to you, but they don't open their mouth. They got their teeth clenched together. Say that shit again. <laughs> you better leave that nigga alone. <laughs> That nigga got the strength of Samson in him at that moment. His boys can't even hold him. They're trying to grab him and shit. That nigga be like, get the fuck in. They had that Denzel moaning. Get your fucking hands off of me. <laughs> so <they> said, <laughs> nigga, take your hands off of me. <laughs> get that Denzel moment, bro. <laughs> But no, seriously though, like that's the one thing that I can tell about the beef. He may never admit it. He may never admit it and it may never come out. But I think the fans hurt that nigga. I think if there's any loss to be had or any type of loss that Drake sustained, it was him having to come to the realization that the culture don't like him like that. I think that's what it is. You feel me? Shout out to David. And that's, and that's why I keep saying over and over, Kendrick didn't win anything because he didn't beat him. Like he, like Drake doesn't care about that. He doesn't care about that part of it. You feel me? What he cares about is what Kendrick exposed, which is the fact that black culture thinks of Drake a certain way. Because, you know, in, in that one song, he said, um, he said that that song with, uh, with Lil Durk, he said, and I never been embraced and the money's hard to make. But when he say embraced, I think he's talking about the industry. But now he knows that it's not just the industry that hasn't embraced him. It's also the culture that hasn't embraced him. And that right there is going to hurt more than anything. <sighs> Excuse me. That right there hurts more than anything. Because that right there is going to is going to bring up dra uh trauma from childhood trauma from you know uh not being black enough for the black side and not being white enough for the white side and keep in mind it's not just um it's not just black folk going in on Drake right now. It's white folk going in on Drake too.
Big Wave said, your Judge Joe Brown impersonation is top tier. I appreciate you, bro. <clears throat> now, see, what you got to understand about Drake is that, uh, uh, see, I know Drake's daddy. See, me and Drake's daddy, we, we went to the same high school together. <laughs> well, let me start on that Judge Joe Brown. I got to hear his voice again to really get it down, Pat. <clears throat> let's see untold legend said drake always has that problem though am in some type of capacity he's been getting clobbered over the head with that narrative since he came on the scene I know, and that's the main reason why it's such a uh, it's such a raw nerve. That's the main reason why it's such it's it's the whole reason why um Rick Ross went at him from that angle. Because the one thing, look, here's the one thing we if we don't know how to do nothing else as black people, we know how to hurt each other. If if we don't know how to do nothing else, we know how to hurt each other. We know how to hurt each other's feelings. You feel what I'm saying? We we know exactly what to say, even if we never say it. We know exactly what to say to, to make a person just feel like shit. We know what to do because we, 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 we're good at that. We'll sit back and we'll examine people and we'll look, we'll look for weaknesses. You know what I'm saying? And then when we find the weaknesses, we start conjuring up things to say in our head that we know is going to hurt the person's feelings and shit, right? We're awesome at that. But yeah, um, <clears throat> they're running around here trying their best to make this K Dot song have some sort of deep, significant meaning. And it just doesn't. It, it just doesn't. Like, I, I get what he's saying in the song. I just don't care. I just don't give a shit. And it's it's really, to be truthfully honest, it's a waste of time anyway. Right? The the funny thing about it, I saw an interview, not an interview, I saw where um uh the creator of the boondocks was given a speech to a college, right? And he said one of the most profound things I ever heard. He said that black people don't realize that they've used up all of the sympathy, all of the racial sympathy that, that they've had. Like, we don't realize that we are so far removed from the civil rights era <clears throat> that we don't understand that when you start crying about racial injustice, uh, uh, systemic racism, poverty, what you're not understanding is at this point, white people don't care. See, the only reason why, if you really want to be honest, the only reason why the civil rights era worked somewhat is because there were white folks that agreed that there were a lot of things that weren't just and weren't fair and, and this, that, and third. But in this day and age, it's gotten to the point where it's just, <clears throat> it's just annoying. It's just annoying. Now, why is it annoying? It's annoying because you're ignoring the fact that in this day and age, the average everyday white person does not have the privilege that you think they have. The, the average everyday white person today is not in the same boat as a white person in the 50s. In other words, the average everyday white person today is struggling too. They've got a bunch of shit they got to deal with too. You know what I'm saying? It's not like it was before where they were definitely first class citizens and you were definitely a second class citizen. It's it's not that way anymore. 
Not completely. Sure, you have little instances where you'll see something happen where it'll look like, oh, that's unfair that that was done to somebody black, and why don't they do that to white people? You'll, you'll see little instances like that. But it's not like it was back in the day. It's not like it was back in the day. So nowadays, when black folks start complaining about certain shit, White people look at it like, yo, I got my own fucking problems. I want to hear about your problems. And, and what makes it even worse is the way they view it today is it's like, why do you get to constantly complain about your problems and use that as the excuse <clears throat> for not excelling or for not doing whatever when as a white person, they don't get to use that excuse. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's something that the average black person is not going to want to examine because of bias. You feel what I'm saying? Like partially because black people today, we want to take on the plight of our forebearers. And this is the reason why you'll hear black people say, when we were slaves. What do you mean when we were slaves? You were never a slave. You feel me? When we were under Jim Crow. What do you mean when we were under Jim Crow? You were never under Jim Crow. But that's the way we speak. We, we speak that way and we think that way. We, we think we deserve the, the, um, we think we deserve the justice that our forebearers didn't get. Even though we have vastly more opportunity than our forebearers had you feel me and and that's a conversation that if you really want to be honest black people are not ready to have they're not ready to have that conversation you feel me they still want to lean on the concept of the the white boogeyman you know i can't do certain things or i'm not in a certain position because the man won't let me type mentality you feel me And I can tell you from my own personal experience that if you always have the mentality that you can't do nothing because of another group of people, you never will be able to do anything. And it's not because of the other group of people. It's because you've said it in your mind that you're never going to be able to do something. And if you said in your mind that you're never going to be able to do something, you're never going to be able to do it. That's, that's the way that works. There's this power in words. There's this power in the tongue. You feel what I'm saying? Pause. But if, if you have it set in your mind, any limitation that you have set in your mind that is outside of the realm of, you know, uh, 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 fiction, right? Whatever thing that a human is capable of doing, but you think you're not capable of doing it, that, that is a mental block that you put on yourself, which means it's not going to happen. So a man think if so is he. That's, that's the way that works. You feel me? That's the way that works. Because even if there's opposition, even if there are white people or whatever group of people trying to stop you from doing something, if you set your mind that you're going to do it, they're not going to be able to stop you. But yo, <clears throat> we coming up on three hours, man. I appreciate you guys for tuning in to the show, hanging out with me the way you always do, showing love, all of that good stuff. You feel me? I'm about to get up out of here, man. Y'all got me in here laughing my ass off. You got me in here laughing my ass off about Unk. <laughs> I'm going to have some more jokes, too. But, Joe, make sure you guys go check out the book, The Angry Man Standard, available on Amazon. All you have to do is type The Angry Man Standard in the search bar. If not, you can hit the link down in the description. All of that good stuff. Y'all already know what it is. I'm going to get up out of here. I appreciate you guys for tuning in, hanging out with me, all of that good stuff. I'm about to cruise these YouTube streets and see who's live and see if I can jump on a panel. You never know where I'm going to pop up. You feel me? 
But yo, other than that, man, salute to everybody that contributed. Salute to everybody that hit the like button. Salute to the whole Beano Nation. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Deuces.